Hello, Dan. First of all, welcome here in Mark Location, a place where you've been quite often over the past year. This would be the first <laughs> yes. question. <laughs> right. what was, when was it the first time you came here? It was about the mid, early 70s, I would imagine, 73, 74. I can't remember exactly. But I came here with my wonderful friend and colleague, Bob Tucci. And we were sent here by a custom music company at that time, Fred Merrick, to try to help uh, encourage the workers to try a, just a little bit different approach to the manufacture of their instruments. You know? We had a particular idea that we wanted to make the instrument uh, completely conical. It was a dream. And uh, something a little bit different on the market. They, they already had a wonderful F-tuba already made. and. Uh, so we, we had a deciding factor that we would like to have some different variations of it. You know, something that all players could benefit. If someone wanted a larger tuba, we gave them a larger tuba. If someone wanted a smaller one, we did it that way. So uh, uh, when I say we did it, it was just an influence. We worked closely with the wonderful makers here at that particular time. So the first project will be F-tuba. Yeah. And uh, when did you start to, to dabble into the entire PT line that we have today? Was, this was all done step by step over the years. Well, you know, the, the basic idea is they had several really good instruments, not too much on the sea. And we brought some copies of some good instruments, you know, here for, to, to observe at that particular time. No one get into brand names, but something that was built, and it was a proven fact, it was quite good. And then we did some variations of having that design incorporated with what they already had. And the main influence was really Bob Tucci, because Bob was living in Germany and could come more often than I could. What I tried to do in the United States is I'm in contact with a lot of people through our organization at that time, called TUBA, now ITEA. And I kept close tabs on all my colleagues and tried to figure out what they wanted and sort of introduce that, that what was needed as a product. And the, the, uh, the BNS line offered us a lot of freedom to develop. They were willing to you know, go that extra mile and see what they could accomplish. But then after the reunification, when Gerhard Meinl got involved, that's when we started to get really specific in the, the introduction of the C, the PT-6. We, uh, and before that, we experimented somewhat and had like a PT-5, if I remember correctly. And it was good, but then they started from scratch in a PT-6 with Gerhardt and a new design. And this wonderful instrument here was found, which, by the way, we call in America, man, our golden goose. Because it, it's just a proven fact. I mean, 20-some years of this instrument, and, you know, we haven't had to improve on it too much since. If I understand why your approach was always not to make the instrument just for yourself, and Bob, but to get as much input from outside to make an instrument that goes into a gap where, where something was needed in the market for the players, for the musicians. I should tell you, when, I, when we first started, I was in college, there was only one instrument available that you could buy. And it was pretty good. But it was sort of, that was it. We wanted something different that played better in tune. I remember the trumpets had all these mouthpieces. We had one that was one or two. And so when we organized uh, TUBA, when I said we did, every one of us had a little job. I remember that Arnold Jacobs talked to Fred Merrick, who was looking for somebody to represent the instruments, and he thought that Bob Tucci and I would make a good partnership. Particularly, I'm an educator who was heavily involved in college teaching and, 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 and a soloist, and Bob being a wonderful orchestral opera player. And uh, uh, that and correlated with what Fred Merrick's business sense with Custom Music Company, we, we start working a little bit more specifically what the players wanted. I always like the approach for students if someone comes in with a particular new sound, I want to keep that. You know, uh, try to help the individual become his sound. If it's a little brighter sound, that's fantastic as long as it's good. But you need equipment to do that. You know? Uh, I was developing the F tuba at that particular time in the United States. I was asked to play a lot of high contemporary music. 
and I only owned a C2 at that particular time, and it was quite difficult because the range of the, the contemporary stuff was all over the place at five octaves. And I wanted something a little bit bigger that sounded a little bit more like the C2, but by a, a particular F2 that I heard in Germany. Uh, I was highly influenced in it, and obviously it was a lot easier to play. So I was more interested in developing that at the particular time. And as a result of it, we just tried to do a little bit of everything to bring our influence. And, and like I say, Bob was very, very, very aware and had uh, you know, some of the old, great American-type instruments and incorporated that sort of philosophy into it. And so I've been doing that for years. It's been a pleasure. Great. It's always a pleasure to have you here again. And to have you here again means you're not here on vacation. You're not only here to say hello and uh, to have some wonderful German sausages, but... Uh, yeah, one of my favorites. The beer's pretty good also. Yeah. Okay, All right. I agree with that. But at the end, there's also a reason why we're here right now. That means we can expect uh, something new, the big D-line coming sooner or later. You know, I've been, I've been talking, you know, we've had several products which are very successful, you know, and I'm very proud of them, you know, our PT6, as we call it, and a PT6P, and uh, the, the wonderful variations of f 2 is and the 606. But it's been, I, I read a lot that Paratucci hasn't done anything new. And, you know, if an instrument is good, why fool with it? You know, that's the way I look at it. One of the weaknesses, I think, in our line has been a comfortable piston F2, but it still sounds like a BNS instrument. You know, rather than copying another sound, I always had the desire to try to incorporate that. And I'm excited that one of the reasons I'm here is I'm testing a new model and an instrument that uh, will be in production soon. And I could tell you that we've made great progress. And as I go back tomorrow, the next two days, I'm going to try several more lead pipes and a little longer tuning slide to get the pitch down a little bit to the more the American market. And I, I'm really excited about it because it, it sounds just like the sound. I love the rotary sound of the BNS instrument, and it's as close as you can get and still be in an F tuba. So I'm excited about that. Another one that we're experimenting with is I wanted a rotary six quarter that sort of sounded like a B flat, but had the ease of the C. And um, had an idea of putting a different type of a B flat bell on somewhat of a six body, with, uh, as Gerhardt calls it, making big hips down here, the more Yorkies try to approach and see what happens. Okay, the first round is kind of interesting and we have some work to do. And in order to get it in tune, we're working on the, the, the top bow here to raise a, a, the fifth partial up a little bit, and the sixth partial, and some new lead pipes. But I'm kind of excited. I kind of think we're going to get that too. So it's a real pleasure to be here and uh, to try the different models. And uh, like I say, this is this is home base for me. Uh, I've been associated with this uh, wonderful BNS company for now about 35 years, and uh, it's been a real pleasure.